Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alex here for TechFlow, and in today's episode, I want to talk you guys through all of my home audio systems. How I listen to music at home, how it all works, how it's all tied together, and ultimately, if it's a good system or if there's anything better out there. So, without further ado, let's get straight into this. Now this is going to be a really, really exciting one, especially for all of you people that love your audio out there. Now, none of the physical products in this video are sponsored whatsoever, however, this video does have a sponsor and that is Squarespace. Now there's one thing you should know about me and that is that I absolutely love music. As long as there's a track going, as long as there's some sort of beat, I'm smiling and I am happy, which is why I've got so many sound systems all over my house and I'm going to take you through all of them today. And they range from, well, ghetto builds with like Raspberry Pis and some speakers that I got from a closing down pub over seven years ago to some pretty insane Shake the Room Dolby Atmos home cinema setups to some pretty insane bookshelf loudspeaker setups. Now before we go and tour all the setups around the house, I want to tell you guys what I set out when achieving this. In every single room of the house, I want to be able to get music playing either by using my voice or by using the watch that's on my wrist. Second thing is the that if there's some AV equipment in the room, like a TV behind me, I want the TV to be able to play also through the audio system. So let's start out this tour by moving out to the garage, checking out some of the ghetto builds first, and then we'll move inside to some of the higher end stuff. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to my gym, or a garage as you would call it here in England. Now lockdown basically forced me to turn this place into a gym. And what do you need when you're working out? Well, obviously you need some banging tunes to get the grind on. Now the gym is a really good place to start as far as stereo systems are concerned because this room really does demonstrate all of the key components that you need to have a smart stereo system. And it all starts with the streamer or the smart bit, what's going to be actually streaming the music or pulling it down from Spotify? Well, it's not going to be my phone because, well, I want to do this from my watch or from a Google Assistant, so, well, a Raspberry Pi. Now, I'll put the link right below that like button or just above there in the card if you want to go and check it out, but we did a video about how to turn a Raspberry Pi into a Spotify music streamer, and basically all it does is it just boots up like a normal Raspberry Pi would, it connects to your Wi-Fi and it appears on your network or in your Spotify as a simple speaker. Now you can plug a DAC or a digital to analog converter into the Raspberry Pi via USB and that looks something like this and then that gives you a headphone out that you could, well you guessed it, plug into a set of headphones but in my case I've actually got it plugged into the Logitech Z5500 multimedia speaker system. The Porter subwoofer basically just sits on the garage floor and then you can see all of the speaker terminals and I have four of them going up this plastic conduit tube out to these JBL Control 5 speakers. Glad I kept them because they look absolutely at home in the gym. And basically all I do is I get my Spotify open and I choose gym speakers and that is basically it. I've got music in here, it's simple, it's awesome. Okay, so now I think it's time for us to move on to something a little bit more plush than just an old Raspberry Pi with some coded software on it with some old speakers that I got from a pub. Welcome to my cinema room and behind me you can see my 83 or 82 inch 4K TV. This video is not about that though, we're talking about audio. Driving this room we've got the Denon X2500H amplifier and basically this is an amplifier that drives all the speakers but it also takes HDMI inputs from all of your things like your, I don't know, Fire TV Cube or PlayStation 5 or your Xbox and then it gives you one clean HDMI out that you can send up to your TV. Whilst doing that though it also extracts the audio from the HDMI input or source and can send the audio out to all of the speakers. This particular amp happens to be a Dolby 
Atmos amp, which means it has channels, speaker channels for some ceiling mounted speakers, obviously for Dolby Atmos. And the amplifier, this one, comes in at around £600 here in the UK. Now, this amplifier happens to be connected to the network, either via Wi Fi or in my case, Ethernet. Now, that's absolutely fantastic for me because this amplifier, and it's the main reason as to why I bought it, interfaces through the network to Spotify Connect. So, you guessed it, just like the Raspberry Pi in the garage, this Denon receiver appears on my Spotify Connect list as a playable speaker. I click that, I get music. Simple. Now, what are we actually listening to the music out of? Flanking each side of the TV, you've got the R26F from Klipsch. And these speakers come in at £600 each, so 1.2K for the pair. And these are my stereo left and right speakers connected to the amp. The centre channel lives on a bracket I made above the TV, and that is the R52C, and that comes in at £250 here in the UK. If we then swap over to the back of the room, you can see the surrounds sound speakers mounted on the wall. These are the R41S from Klipsch again, and these are £150 each, so 300 for the pair. And then I mentioned this is a Dolby Atmos home cinema, which means we have some speakers up there. These are the CI-130s, and they're about £120 here in the UK, so 240 for the set. And then that just leaves the low end, the subwoofer, the minus 100 hertz. This is the 115SW from Klipsch. And as the name may suggest, this is a 15 inch in diameter subwoofer. It is huge. And here is just a can of pop for reference. This thing is absolutely massive. Now, I know you sat there behind your screen looking at all of this and thinking, God, that room's really, really small for all of those huge speakers and a 15 inch sub. Why would Alex want all of that? Why would he want his room to shake to pieces? And to be honest, if you came here, turn this system up, that's not what you get at all. This room wouldn't shake. Well, it would if there was an explosion going off in the film, but it wouldn't just shake. That Denon amplifier has some really cool tricks up its sleeve where you can actually fine tune each individual speaker to the room that you are in, right down to the listening position. So I have, well, configured all the speakers in this room to basically be on my sofa. So if you sat on my sofa, that is where it sounds best. You can control the timing delay between each speaker right down to the milliseconds. You can also control the gain of each speaker. And Alex, why such a huge sub? Basically just so this thing can play really low. It doesn't play loud and there's a huge difference between the explosion feeling real and there just being a load of shake and bass around the room. I really do hope that makes sense and obviously none of you are ever going to experience this home cinema but all I can tell you is it sounds absolutely fantastic and it should do for the grand total I think of just over 3,000 pounds. Now next I was going to take you guys outside and show you the environmental speakers that I've got out there uh, for the hot tub but I think that is a little bit boring so we'll just move on to the kitchen. So this is probably my favourite setup both audibly and aesthetically. These, the heart of this setup is the Kef LS50 wireless bookshelf speaker. Now these speakers are absolutely insane and you may have just clocked that awesome awesome driver design. We'll talk about that in a little while. But first, let's talk numbers. Now, there's two drivers on each of these speakers, and they both have their own separate class AB amplifiers. The mid bass driver has a 280 watt amp, and the tweeter driver, and the tweeter, yeah, you guessed it, sits in the middle, that has a 100 watt driver. So, 380 watts each side on this system. But for me, that just wasn't enough power really. So flanking that off to the side, we've got the R400B Kef subwoofer. And as you can see, it's white. It looks exactly like the Kef LS50 wireless speakers. To be honest, it looks like these should be a set altogether. The subwoofer has two nine inch drivers on either side. And it also has like the speakers, two separate amplifiers to drive each driver. Now this speaker is really, really cool because basically with the drivers amplified on each side of it, it means that the forces that are created by the subwoofer are cancelled out. So if the sub is playing really, really loud in this room, nothing is physically shaking, but the bass is still there, which is what I really, really like about this system. And it's why you'd spend the extra money on a subwoofer. Imagine hearing the bass, but things not physically shaking. That's what happens here. Now for inputs on the top, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AUX, optical, and 
PC. These speakers are network connected and you can do things like airplay to them but what I tend to do here is just simply use Spotify Connect. As soon as these speakers are on they appear as a speaker in the Spotify Connect list. As soon as you click them you are controlling the volume, playback, pause, skip tracks, absolutely everything right from well the app on your watch or failing that obviously you've got the app on your phone. Now obviously you guys will have noticed the other things around these speakers like the turntable and the huge TV. If we want to get the turntable to work out of these speakers we have to switch over to the auxiliary input which takes a RCA cable from the turntable. And if you guys would like a link to the turntable I'll put that right below the like button. As far as the TV is concerned well yep you guessed it it's connected via an optical cable so if I want to listen to any audio that's coming through the TV like the PlayStation 5 or the Chromecast or I'm just using a smart app on the TV, flick the speakers over to optical and then they are, well, reproducing the TV sound as it should be through the digital cable. Now Alex, why have you spent this much on the speaker system that's right behind you? Is it really, really that good? And yes it is, and let me explain why. Basically, unlike all the other speakers you've seen around the house that have been passive speakers and they've had a separate amplifier to drive them, like the speakers in the lounge, they have a Denon amplifier but they're Klipsch speakers, well the case with these is that the speakers are KEF speakers and the DSP is a KEF DSP. So that basically means that KEF makes everything so they can tune the DSP inside of these speakers to the speakers and the cabinet. Now because this system sounds that good you can actually flip over to the PC input on these speakers. Now what does PC mean? Well it's basically a USB connection so what I can go ahead and do is plug in my iPad uh, USB to these speakers through the USB-C port. I can launch Tidal and then I have the entire Tidal Masters catalogue of master quality CD music on my iPad playing digitally straight to the KEF speakers and the KEF speakers are doing all the decoding of that audio. It's all done inside the LS50s which is why these sound so so good. So this is my ultimate setup here and this is what I love. I can listen to my records or I can watch TV or I can listen to music all through these speakers and it's super super easy. Definitely the favourite setup. Okay, so welcome to my bedroom. For like the fourth time, this feels really, really weird starting a camera in here. So my main thing with the setup in here is that I wanted it to be inconspicuous. Like, I don't have that much space in my bedroom, so having some huge speakers in here just didn't really seem fitting. So I've hidden them all away in the ceiling with ceiling speakers. Now, I've got a mixture of speakers in here, and it's actually a surround sound setup in here. Not at most, but it's 5.1. So let's go through all the speakers, and there's two types in the ceilings. You've got these really, really small ones, which are tiny, and these are made by a company called Kef again and then there's some well bigger left and right stereo speakers for when I'm listening to music in here and these were just some ceiling speakers that I found on Amazon and I'll put all the links down there below now there's not a lot of low end when you're using ceiling speakers especially really small ones like this so you definitely need if you want to turn it up a subwoofer and in my room well the subwoofer is hidden away in the wardrobe one thing I've also figured out as well is if I leave a tiny crack in my wardrobe basically the whole wardrobe acts as a speaker and the bass response when the wardrobe just has a crack in it like this compared to when it's closed is insane like it sounds like a huge subwoofer and it's only this little white box that's hidden away in my wardrobe now to tie all of the speakers in the ceiling and the subwoofer together obviously we're gonna need something to do that and that is an amplifier by Denon that is in the airing cupboard in the hallway basically all the speaker cables from this device go through into the roof and touch all of the ceiling speakers and it's basically just a 5.1 AV receiver which has HDMI down to the bed. I can Spotify connect to these to listen to music which is what I mainly do but obviously if I'm watching TV it uses the HDMI arc and pulls the TV audio from the TV and plays it out the speakers in stereo or 5.1 but to be perfectly honest with you I just listen really in stereo with the subwoofer. Now, this is a bit of a bonus one for you because right here, this 
is my ensuite. And in here, I have showers and listen to music. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much about this because we've done an entire video installing these special speakers in my ensuite, but these are made by a company called Lyth and they are smart IP connected speakers. So basically in there, I can, well, use my phone via Spotify Connect and stream all of the music to them. And there's even a button on the wall. And if I tap that button, it activates as a next track. So if I'm in the shower, I can hit it and turn on the next track. It's it's really, really cool. But I think that's about it. And it's time to thank Squarespace. Now you guys must know about Squarespace by now because we've talked so much about them. But if you don't, well, here's a few of my company websites on screen right now that were built using Squarespace. Now Squarespace is a website builder online and it's really, really awesome. Why is it really, really awesome? Well, basically you can choose from one of their thousands of templates, upload all your own stuff to it, make it yours, make it count, and then you've got yourself a website really, really easy without barely lifting a finger. Now, I know there'll be a few of you that are saying, hang on, Alex, that sounds really boring. I wanna do the expert stuff. Well, they've got that built in too. You can do stuff like HTML. They've got things like SEO on there so you can see how your website's gonna appear on certain search engines like Google, for example. And at the end of the day, it's not just a website, it's a business. Like if you want to sell things on your Squarespace website, they've got things like e-commerce built in there too. Honestly, the all-in-one platform to build your websites, go and use Squarespace, but make sure you use our code TECHFLOW or go to squarespace.com forward slash TECHFLOW to get 10% off your first Squarespace domain or purchase. But for now, that's been my home audio systems, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. Peace. Hey, Google, define plush. Plus has eight different no, meanings. No, stop. Starting with the most common one, hey Google, plus stop. can be used as a preposition to mean. Hey Google, stop! What does plush mean?